my fellow colleagues, architects and friends. It's a great honor to share some of our works over here. Um, this is Tinker Villa. We hope that we can actually share some of the works from the point of the house, extended the view on the housing in Malaysia, on the repetitive housing and um, mass housing development. This is actually a story of house and a story beyond a house. Okay. A house that we stay and where we live and how we live is a kind of a choice. And this choice is actually of the lifestyle that we make for ourselves. So when we talk about lifestyle, we're always having a question whether this lifestyle is the lifestyle that we're looking for or a lifestyle has been given to us. Private developer housing and the crisis in housing in Malaysia has been never addressed this for quite some time. We always think that the lifestyle is something that very individual. And but what we are doing and what we have been keep building looks like something that has been fading away. It's been a long time that has never exist. So to customize a house, we always looking at something that appropriate, relevant, and more important, it has to be affordable. So a design solution to a house is straightforward. And there are numerous of consideration factors need to be considered. And I always think that architects is such a basic architect's skill to address all these issues and to seek for the balances and within the context and come up with a design solution. But however, we always feel that all these factors is fluctuated. When I say fluctuated, it's actually not all the time. We are actually adopting the same factor even on the ideologies, value, and culture. So it is it's becoming an architect's choice to create his own star for an appropriate design solution, which is relevant to where we are and, and the context of the site. So to, to design a house or to design a multiple house, we are still go back to what are the factors is relevant what is appropriate to us in terms of our lifestyle and what is how much they can, we can afford to own such house. So in this project, Drinker Villa, along the process when we finish the project, the, some of the variable change. And this variable change, it makes the context change and eventually it makes the demand change. So the client's demand change, you eventually affected the design and somehow the function of the house may change. This is the um, client's brief commissioner's his uh, retirement home in Chennai. And this is actually his second house after we did his first house years ago in Shah Alam. He has given us a very low budget, 5,000 square feet small building. And this is the site. Is in the on the hill of the Tana Rimba in Chennai. This place is a full of the tropical rainforest with terrain, wood, and of course, wild neighbor. Uh, eventually, it's actually in the middle of jungle. So when I say in the middle of jungle, we always think that to design a house in the middle of jungle, the first criteria is we try not to disturb the existing rainforest. So to design and to put the building in the middle of the jungle, we try to squeeze the space minimum so that it would not disturb too much. So on this plan, we managed to squeeze a size of vacant land that nicely occupied the footprint of the building so that we have a minimum disruption to the natural forest. And this is where we are. Okay, so the building has been sited in the middle of the jungle and whatever the Slouding, access, ancillary building, driveway are uh, actually work behind all the woods. So of course, when we when we do the building in the jungle, there are always some damages unavoidable. In this building, we have no choice. Two number of trees have to be cut down. The rest of hundred over three are still trying to remain as 
original. And this picture shows how, how close is some of the, some of the existing tree close to the building. And this one giving us some difficulty when during the construction, especially on the foundation. The contractor, clients, and consultant is trying very hard to keep alive for all the existing close to the building. For those some even lesser than two meter. Okay, to design a house, it is a challenge for us to convince a client what house should look like in a middle jungle. And a default house, to most of the client, to them, inside and outside is very clear. So they are still thinking of the a house is something like a spaceship. A spaceship logic is a place where it's secure internally. So regardless where is land and to where the, the location or the site, to them, inside and outside is very clear. Outside is a hostile zone and inside is safe. So when this kind of space logic come to client's mind or house owner, what they are looking for is always something is a shoebox. Uh, with the rigid border, regardless outside how beautiful, how natural environment is to them, as long as they are secure inside, that is okay. So to, to unlock the spaceship order, we basically need to break the, leg the limitation of the legacy of the box. When, when we wanted to break it up, it always come to um, a debate on what is private and what is public. At the same time, we had to fulfill the clients, the sense of security within the house. And but we are, they are also understanding that the client has a desire to be attached themselves into the external public space and natural environment. And this one sometimes and most of the time actually create some conflict on the designing a house. So it is actually a choice of architect to to select what are the factors and what are the criteria that we, we, we use, come up with the design solutions. So, in this, pro, in this design process to unlock the fixed border, the first thing we are trying to break up the limitation of building so that we tell the client, forget about your four wall. In any of the houses design, we always think that building environment, the minimum, the lowest unit is actually one house. But when we break up the four wall, this minimum unit will be coming different. When we break up the four wall, the dining hall, living room, bedroom, toilet will become an individual unit. And this individual unit can be rearranged and reconnect back by different method of the architecture language. So we first thing convince the client to remove all the wall so that you are living in the almost a half open environment. And second thing, we, we managed to convince the client forget about your main door. So end up this building, we do not have the main door. Or uh, this is, uh, we, I, I don't call it a main door, it's an entrance of the house. It's actually a, a gateway, to me it's a gateway entering the building, but it's actually free floor entrance. So from, from here, coming up with the layering of the going into the transition space, and behind the functioning space, and moving toward the other side is the other, the other wall. This world is actually connecting directly to the natural environment. So this house, basically, we have created a layer of spaces and to leave it open and free floor and moving around within the natural environment. Okay, in this manner, in Twinkle Vela, when all the spaces, it become a small segment and it become a one unit, then it's actually easier for us to do arrangement. So even the structure element become a single unit. 
And this single unit of the vertical plane and overhead plane will be used to form a basic shape of the building. So, and internal space will leave it open entirely so that we have a more flexible in terms of the space arrangement and it will be directly connected. So this arrangement is easier for us to do some reprogramming of the activity within all the basic unit of the room, of the living, living area with the toilet and so on. So the vertical plane the form the first layer of the segregations. And this segregation is eventually is actually a made of a face concrete and the overhead plane and supposed to be a protection from the fallen tree. Um, okay. We are looking at this vertical plane. It's actually a first segregation from the modular work. When we are doing the fair face concrete, and the contractor is the first time doing the fair face concrete, we are actually using remain all the line. So to actually um, psychologically it is representing one word that actually close to the actual social economy and whatever the physical world is. And passing through the gateway of the entrance, we are actually turning and entering into the other world that are actually merging from the natural and built environment and natural environment. An overhead plane originally acting as the protection on the fallen wood and now they sometimes change the function along the process of construction. So client added a toilet and it becoming a functioning space. So on the other side of the wall, what we have done is see we are trying to craft up some of the spaces for the usable space when all the individual unit of the spaces become small, the arrangement of the spaces is easier so that it will be it will it will it will be easier for us to do a meaningful networking of the space. Same and this is where we do start from the basic space, we actually come up with the overhead plane and the vertical plane, and we actually extracted up and craft up the circulation space and the other side of the wall and form the functioning space. And some of the attractive ad additive space is also added to show the bulk protrusion of the building form. And that will become the combination of the building form in the context of the natural forest. This is a simple layout of four plan. We had a gateway in front, and this is the remain and one vertical plane. The subtractive space was cloth up and put it in the just behind the wall. And the remaining of the functioning space are actually open directly to the natural environment. And if looking at the floor plan, we actually realize that there, is actually, as there doesn't have any barrier of four wall. Means all the spaces over here on the bedroom above and also on the gallery and living area above is actually free flow. So from any angle of the site, from any jungle, you can actually enter into this individual unit of the space. You can directly go into the bedroom rather than going through your main entrance, you can go to your toilet directly. So that will be easiest for us to rearrange and reprogram the entire activity of the house. And this is the, this is the overhead plane. So the, the fixed model, the fixed border of the building only can be seen and limited to these two structure elements. And from here, we actually trying to, trying to make use of the structure element to become part of the building element. So, and this is the other side of the wall. After the fair face wall, so the result of the unlocking the internal space 
so that the, uh, the additive space is arranged face directly to, to the jungle. And this is a prototype additive space where we show the boat building form. This is another angle at the night time. Okay, this picture basically it tells the interrelationship of the vertical barrier wall and the subtractive space on the other side. So, regardless whether where is a space and all the, fun the arrangement of functioning space, the access is actually unlimited. You can actually come up from, enter from en entrance and the gateway so called, then go into the bank. What we, whatever we wanted to show to the client is you are actually entering into a different world through the gateway of the structure plane. And the vertical wall will somehow is being used as a part of the finishes of the internal space as well. So this site, after this wall, is actually solely used for the circulation space and the functioning space is directly merging into the natural environment. This is the ground floor. It's supposed to be a, a glass living hall and it's supposed to be enclosed. But eventually, when, when the client see the site, the beautiful the site and understand the concept, eventually he actually changed the mind to leave the entire space open. So, this one sometimes we realize, and we actually purposely created another space, a more secure space for his living house. So this one is actually along the process of the construction, we realize sometimes the, the context of or the, the external factor did change the needs and the demands of a design. And this demand eventually changed the function of the building. Okay. Internally, basically all finishes remain basic and bold. We are using Fairface. We are trying to, to use a lot of the natural, um, the basic building material. We have Fairface concrete. We have open brick, open brick, facing brick. We have cement floor and lesser finishes. So this is actually giving a rich palette of its original color and finishes and of the material. Uh, this is staircase. The detailing is simple, and in one way, it's actually cost effective. The railing are not supposed to be here, actually. This is not supposed to be here. But due to the, the sense of security and safety, the client decided to put it on anyway. Basically, there's a minimum finishes is being used on just for floor, sometimes for ceiling. And the rest are still just, just remain bare and original color of the building material. Uh, and this is toilet, uh, limited area for the mosaic. It's trying to use the color to blend with the color of the facing brick. And this is the, okay, eventually the client, after complete the building, he actually realized most of the time when he stay in this house, the spaces he needed for internally is actually minimum. And he found out the most of the time that he needed is in the site at the activity or the house is outside, either on a rooftop, either on a gazebo he built separately, or either on other area of the jungle. So eventually, this design, he actually decided to change the library to become his living room and his bedroom. And the rest, he turned the whole function of the building into a villa. So it's open for Airbnb. Okay, unlock a default house. When we say besides its ideology, its context, and etc., we always believe it has to be affordable. And the construction cost of this building is cheap. Uh, 1.65 million for the 4,790 square feet. Uh, comparing, comparing, to, uh, comparing to a house that you're buying for condominium in town now, there is affordable. And this is 
a page of Airbnb, we purpose put it up. Okay, along the process of the completing building, some of the finding is the site context or so-called the natural environment is actually not being only considered in the design responsiveness, but it's also changed the demand and the need of the user. This is my client uh, trying to catch a big snack. And these are all the neighbor of him. So sometimes he told me uh, the corridor and also the staircase, sometimes monkey comes. I say, it's okay, that's your friend, that's your neighbor. Um, to accept this kind of design concept to try to open up and unlock yourself, to fit yourself into this kind of houses, uh, you, need to, you need to have a certain understanding of what the life, what is your life that you needed. So, in, in this process of design of the house, we, we, we sometimes we realize context sometimes change the demand. And the demand changed the design and design some way, some, somehow changed the way of life and also part of the function of building. So, to unlock a house, and this process actually inspired us the unique relationship between the appropriateness, relevance, and within the context in our design. But what if when we are moving into a bigger scale, and some questions still comes back when, when can we still unlock the typology of default house in the same manner? As I said just now, lifestyle that we have nowadays, is it a lifestyle that we wonder, or is it a lifestyle that has been given? Or do we have an option, a choices? Would the methodology of this unlocking strategy to be diluted into bigger scale of the housing? And where the so-called developer's profit margin is a dominant? So that will come back to the relevance and the affordability. So let's test it out. Um, I will extend this house concept into a multiple house, a repetitive house. So this is what we understand, and this is the choice we have available in the market. From one end to the other, one, unit one, one to 100 is the same. So do we have, when, do we have the choice to unlock some of the the default house. So, same site, similar character, variety in facade and layout. I just going through very fast because this is, uh, we probably can talk to in the other forum. Jodas residence in Gajang is completed in 2015. This is one of the projects done by in our office. So, in this house, basically, the project is given a chance to unlock a multiple duplication of the repetitive of rented house. So, each, each of the unit on the on the unit of the terrace house, is design is different. Layout is different, facade is different, but the client is actually expecting some kind of the similarity and design concept of the facade. We do not have any chance to debate too much from what has been lot size given by the town planner. So within the limitation of the lot sizes and commercial consideration, budget, construction cost, this is the thing that we're trying to do. So building has been completed. So this is the, the facade. The, from, from outlook, it doesn't look it's very much different from one end to the other. But if you're looking, if you're looking at the, some of the unit, this is uh, type A, this is type B, and this is type C. Uh, we just make a little bit different, but internal layout is different. Even though it's different, it wouldn't be so much different because the lot size is not being controlled by the architects. And this is another one. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, we have uh, some repetitive A, B, C, and some D and E over here. So in between the lot size and terrace house of 14, we will have similarity. Um, quick one, five minutes. This is a typical typology of high-rise housing. And put it this way, you and I are different. Everyone here is unique and different, but majority, what is available in the market for our home is so much the same without variety. So the marketplace has made us to adopt the design solution very much tied back to developers' profit margin. So in this circumstances, our demand as the human looking for variety and possibility in our humanity has not been fulfilled most of the time. So Lehman, 
have no leave, no choice to accept whatever is available in the market. Then just like, just like the, the current mass housing that's happening in our Malaysia. Okay, so what we are trying to do is we're trying to unlock a typology of the repetitive high-rise house. And this is one of the project O2 Residence Bujong completed in 2017 this year. And this is a six block of high-rise tower. Each block, the design is different. So the shape is different. We are actually using, adopting, it's actually a responding to the, the global climate issue and also the housing repetitive issue. So we, I wouldn't have much time to, to talk about the concept or this thing, but it's just trying to show you, uh, is it possible for us to unlock? And this is the block A and block C. If you can see the, the, all the layout, all the unit, all the shape, all the size is different. And we're also trying to unlock from the lift lobby to the entrance of the unit. Uh, instead of passing through the corridor design, we're actually trying to use bridge concept. So these are the things that we're trying to unlock the typology of the existing repetitive housing. And this is some of the photo. We won't go through very detail. Okay, what I wanted to show you to you is actually the the construction cost is one six eight per square feet. The why I always insist on the price is because whatever we do, it has to be relevant in the social economic framework. And whenever we are doing over here in Malaysia, are tied back with not only government but it's the private developer where we are actually looking for them as a collaborative partner to build a better built environment. And we actually always prove to them it's not expensive to do all this. So the process of locking eventually inspired the ideology of the customizing an alternative prototype. And we can have a choice to design a house just for one, or we can have to unlock a bigger picture of the default house. And the the process will eventually lead us to think, what else architect can do in our general housing and built environment? What we've shown here is what we have done for the of still remaining arguable. But the only thing I believe, we are always, as an architect, looking for something is more flexible, something more possibility and more choices, which is relevant and is appropriate to our context of our social economy and also our built environment. And the power is actually in architect is making a choice and all the product that we relying is relying on the power of architect to make a choice. Thank you very much. That's my speech.